So, uh, thank you uh, for, uh, this, uh, for the opportunity. Now, uh, I do feel that the uh, term of something being not a new something is a bit overused in the recent years. So, uh, I want to beg your pardon for the title of this webinar, but that's really an important idea we would like to convey and a really important idea we discuss uh, with our clients, current and future, because AB Handshake is really uh, a new approach to combating fraud, a new way of dealing with this problem. And that is why we feel that the industry should really be at least aware of this, of the existence of this solution. So why now? Uh, the problem uh, as of today is that uh, the actual direct loss uh, of telecom service providers from fraud uh, is estimated at $44 billion only direct loss due to a recent study. And uh, that is especially painful for the voice market, which is already uh, going down. So uh, really, really a big problem. And this problem exists even despite the fact that currently each provider already has a number of uh, anti-fraud tools in place. So these are in-house developed tools. These are tools bought from different vendors. And sometimes they are specific tools uh, meant for combating specific fraud types, but still this is not enough to change the situation. And uh, while in the first point I mentioned uh, direct loss, there's also a considerable indirect loss involved because uh, customers hit by fraud are not definitely not happy and they uh, migrate or consider migrating to other services like OTT services or sometimes to competitors. So that's again, a serious problem for service providers. And not only that, uh, nowadays we see growing attention from the regulators in different countries to the problem of voice fraud. There are some, some regulations already being made. So again, that's, uh, that shows the significance of the problem. Uh, now, what's actually, what, what are the obstacles uh, for creating a tool that can change the situation? Uh, first of all, uh, in order to completely protect the customers uh, and the op operators themselves from financial loss. And this should be a solution that works in real time, but works in real time with uh, independent of the network technology. So that should be uh, for both IP and IP networks. Secondly, uh, the solution should uh, prevent all types of fraud because there's no use of closing down uh, a certain fraud type, uh, a certain number of fraudulent routes towards your network only to find the same traffic reaching your network through another point. So it should be really universal and handle all, all the known types of fraud. Uh, then it also should be attractive and affordable for different types of companies, different types of operators, because again, uh, fraud is a global issue. And uh, there's even if uh, a part of a portion of the market is considered a protected, there's still going to be fraud because a portion of the market will not be using the solution. So some global solutions sh should really be uh, attractive and affordable for all. Uh, another important feature, we feel that uh, the solution should be non-intrusive because, well, there is considerable caution for from an operator always to use something completely new. And of course, that's the caution, this caution will be doubled in case the solution can affect the network, can affect the calls in any way. So a non-intrusive solution is, uh, has significantly bigger chances for uh, adoption. Now also uh, an important thing is that the solution must have simple architecture because again, a global, uh, a global rollout of the solution uh, implies significant resources from a number of companies and uh, a simple solution will always have better chances. And lastly, uh, due to this fact that the uh, regulation bodies now have a significant interest towards uh, fraud as a problem, uh, the solution ideally should provide objective evidence of fraudulent, att of fraudulent attempts. Because uh, this evidence can be used not only in dispute, which disputes between operators, not only in payment withhold withholding, uh, disputes, but also for uh, law enforcement uh, efforts and traceback efforts. So these are, I think, the prerequisites for, uh, for a truly successful solution. Now, having all those uh, uh, aims uh, before us, 
uh, with this uh, device, the AB Handshake, which is a solution that performs uh, out of band and end to end validation of calls and does it in real time. So what we allow to do, we enable an operator to validate each outgoing and each incoming call from and to their network. Now, this approach definitely allows us to uh, cope with all the main uh, fraud types. So that's complete coverage from any type of voice fraud. Because the, uh, the validation in this case is out of band, it's universal, so it works with all types of signaling. And uh, again, pursuing that aim of creating a universal solution. Uh, we uh, have prepared several integration options using the standard protocols like SIP radius and diameter. So we use only the standard protocols and standard features of the equipment for integration. Uh, our solution uh, is helpful not in case, uh, not only in case of fraud disputes, it also provides uh, logs of all fraudulent attempts, which are validated by both sides, by both the A side and the B side, which is uh, really uh, important data in case of cases like traceback activities. Uh, now, in order to uh, to make this a solution work, we uh, build a, a community, a global community. And uh, we work with all types of companies. So uh, already among our clients, we have uh, different companies. We have MNOs, we have MVNOs, we have fixed line operators, and we have even calling applications. So uh, the businesses of very different types, of very different scales, find this solution affordable and attractive. Uh, at the moment, of course, in order to facilitate the growth of this community, uh, we have the early adopters program in place. So the solution is now available uh, with a extended free trial to for the operators to test it out and see uh, if it really works for them. Now, how does this work? Uh, basically, AB Handshake, uh, the main element of AB Handshake is the call registry software, which is installed within the operator security perimeter. Now, the software in real time uh, receives the uh, A number, the B number, and the call event details from the switching equipment. And each time a call is originated from, let's say, network A, uh, in parallel, uh, the uh, call registry initiates a verification request to, toward network B, towards the B party. Uh, this is a direct communication, so the actual uh, 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 request reaches the network even uh, before the call is set up. So it introduces introduces no additional latency into the call. And uh, the request is routed by the E164 range of the operator. So by the time the call is set up, uh, by the time it reaches network B, uh, network B also sends the A number, the B number, and the call start an uh, event in this case to the call registry. And the call registry can then compare the two sets of data. So if the data received via the path of the call is the same as received directly from the operator, that's good. If not, well, then that's a problem. Then the call registry will reply with a specific fraud type it has detected. So that's not just an OK or not OK response. That's a specific type of fraud uh, mentioned by the system. Okay, so uh, one of the ways to show this concept, uh, to explain that is uh, a WhatsApp chat. So for example, two people are communicating, they're calling each other, and in parallel, they are text texting each other, uh, asking, well, did you get my call? I'm really speaking to you. Yes, I did. And what number do you see? Well, this number. So by establishing that the call is really received by the intended person, and that the number he sees is the actual number made uh, used to make the call, we can validate this call. Of course, in real life, this happens not between two people, but between two pieces of equipment. Uh, OK, so um, there's, uh, the, the architecture is quite simple, but there is uh, one additional element. That's the central database, or the participants database, as we call it. It doesn't participate in the validation as such because the, all the uh, exchange is directly between the two operators. What it does, it stores the list of E164 number ranges and the IPs of the call registries. Uh, so this, at the moment, this database is maintained by us. We have a preliminary agreement with the GSMA that they will take over the maintenance as this, of this database as a trusted neutral entity. So what happens is that uh, when Every time when a new operator comes on board, it submits its E164 number range, uh, 
the IP of its call registry, and they are stored within the central database. And this update is then distributed to all the participants. So that's the limit. Uh, these functions of the central database are limited to distributing uh, these updates. Now, a couple of words need to be said about the security of the solution because that's, of course, top, uh, uh, an important issue for all, all our clients. Now, the uh, first of all, the call registry software is installed within the operator security perimeter, so that's protected by by the operator's standard security policies and firewalls and all, all and all uh, similar measures. Uh, the uh, communication between two call registries is uh, performed uh, via HTTPS with TLS encryption. So again, that's uh, a direct and uh, secure connection. But even uh, with that, uh, the uh, handshake only contains the same data that is being used uh, for the setup of the call. So the same A number, the same B number, and the same call event, which is uh, sent via an unknown chain of carriers, is sent directly to the B party via a secure connection. So no, no, no security issues here. Because all the data is processed and stored within the operator security perimeter, no third party has any access to private or commercial data. So the uh, AB Handshake solution is fully compliant with the GDPR or any similar regulations. Uh, now, uh, I would like to show several examples of how this works. Just a quick word before that. So the main principle of validation, uh, as is evident from the schemes I've shown earlier, is the concept of collective security. Uh, the operators work together to fight fraud, and they do that in real time. What's really important, and we feel that's really uh, a plus of our system, that all validation results are communicated to the other party. So if one party detects fraud on their side, this, is, this will be also always communicated back to the other party. So both call registries for every call have a synchronized view of what's going on with the call, whether there's fraud or not. Uh, the validation process uh, and the validation process cannot be affected by an intermediate party. So that's direct connection between A to B. No, any parties have access to this communication. Uh, a couple of examples here, uh, short stopping, uh, validation of an outgoing call. In this case, we see that the call hasn't reached the intended network. And uh, what's happened is because the uh, originator has sent the A number, uh, the B number and the call start event to its call registry, and the call registry then has reached out to the call registry on the B side. Uh, it has asked basically, did you get my call? And because the call registry has replied that, no, I didn't get such a call, uh, the uh, call registry on the A side also knows that it's fraud. That's a case of short stopping, and the call can be blocked. A similar case, but with the validation of a terminated call. So in this case, we see uh, uh, a hacker or um, a fraudulent provider, fraudulent carrier terminating uh, traffic to the B party with spoofed CLIs. So that's typical for a robocalling or a first log of Angiri. And the terminating switch sends the data to the call registry, which then uh, asks the actual owner of the spoofed CLI. So I really make this call. Of course, the actual owner will reply, no, I didn't make such a call. That's not me calling you. And if I'm receiving this confirmation, the call can be blocked. Um, Something that's uh, it's really, uh, I think, unique uh, at the moment to our solution is that we are really uh, good at preventing uh, such such a method of fraud as call stretching. Because AB Hanching uh, Exchange is not only the start of the call events, but also the end of call events. So uh, we see a typical call stretching scenario here where uh, at, the, at the setup of the call, it's really normal. So everything goes on well. The, the data is compliant with actually what should be seen in the call. And then the conversation has started. So not, 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 nothing bad. But then at some party, uh, but at some point of the call, it turns out that the fraudster has been recorded, recording the voice of the B party. And then it sends a call disconnect to the B side and starts playing back audio of, of the recorded call to the A side. Now, thanks to AB Handshake, this disconnect message will be immediately transmitted to the call register on the B side, and it will transmit this call, this uh, end of call message to the back to the A side. So both uh, parties will be immediately able to dis discontinue the call because 
as of this moment, it's clearly a case of cold stretching that's fraud. Uh, another very um, important, I think, uh, use case for us at the moment, uh, that's detection of uh, interconnected bypass to the networks of our clients. We already have uh, traffic, live traffic from live customers uh, virtually to any uh, network in the world. And this allows us to effectively detect cases of interconnect bypass towards the networks of our clients. So in this case, that's a symbol scenario. We see that the call was intended to reach uh, the B party through a proper connection from an international switch. And then uh, it was intercepted by a fraudster and redirected to a SIM box. Now what happens here is that the originator sends the A number, the B number, and the call event details to the call registry, which then sends the validation request to the B side. Now the B side now is expecting to receive this call with an international A number. It doesn't see such a call, but it sees a call at the same time and with the same B number, but with a local A number and from a local switch. Now, by comparing these two records, these two uh, entries in the database, the call registry will deduce that SIM box fraud. And again, uh, this will be evident to both parties. So this, this result will be communicated back to the A side and both parties will have the option to block such a call. Now, uh, additionally, there can be a more complicated case uh, because uh, in some cases, the call registry on the B side will be expecting this international call, but it will actually see no call at all, neither from an international switch nor from a local switch. That means that uh, most, uh, most cases that has an OTT call. So that's a call that has been transmitted to OTT and has been terminating, uh, terminated by the internet. Again, in this case, uh, obviously because that's not a voice call, a B handshake cannot be used to block the actual call but it can be used to detect this, this uh, fraudulent case and it can provide uh, the list of B numbers for OTT termination in real time for the operator to take action on their side. There's a number of options how the operator can take action. We have uh, several use cases with our clients from uh, uh, limiting the speed of internet uh, to actually com completely shutting it off for 10 to 15 seconds. So there's a number of options, but that's done by the operator himself on his side. Uh, the EB handshake's role is to detect the list of B numbers in real time. Uh, now to sum up this portion, uh, the call registry of the EB handshake can, use, can be used to save logs of fraudulent attempts. And I remind that these logs are validated by both the A and B side. AB handshake can send alerts to the web user interface or any communication channel preferred by the operator. That can be set up in the user interface. And uh, it also can send control messages to the switching equipment. So the calls can be blocked up automatically in real time. The specific rules can be configured by the operator. And normally we suggest that the operator uses the system in alerting mode for the first, well, the first month or, or so, just to get acquainted with how the system works. After that, uh, rules can be configured to block the calls automatically once the <clears throat> operator is confident in the system. Uh, the implementation of AB Handshake allows to stop using uh, solutions like test call generators because actually there's no use for specific campaigns towards dedicated test numbers when the routes towards the network are tested 24-7 with live traffic, which is far more efficient. Uh, on the other hand, AB Handshake can be used uh, in parallel with existing solutions. For example, if you're running something like uh, a CDR analysis solution, uh, the input from AB Handshake can be configured to be streamed directly into the system to uh, pro provide the system with fresh examples of fraud. And in this way, it can complement existing solutions. Uh, we are quite flexible in terms of integration. So basically the prerequisite for integration for the AB Handshake to work is to receive uh, call details, call event details in real time. This can be arranged uh, in a number of ways. Uh, for some operators, the SIP proxy option is preferable. So for that, we need a SIP portion of the network. And the SIP proxy used for this purpose is actually also provided by AB Handshake as a part of the solution. Uh, in other cases, we uh, integrate with uh, switching equipment or SBCs using uh, RADIUS protocol. In this case, uh, the uh, call registry 
has the call data directly from the switch RSBC element, and the control of the call is executed by the radius packet of disconnect message. Uh, also, uh, another option available or set of options available is integration via diameter or HTTP APIs uh, with uh, elements of the CAMEL uh, network like CAMEL Gateway, SCP, or even some custom elements like voice firewalls or similar elements. Now, for every operator, we uh, uh, we work together with the operator's technical team to make sure that we discover the most efficient way for the operator to integrate, which involves minimum work from the operator's side on the one hand, and on the other hand, on the other hand provides the system with all the details which are needed for its functioning. Uh, now, a bit about the system interface. So, basically, the system shows uh, uh, at first, at first glance, it shows the high-level information. So you see immediately the number of inbound, outbound fraudulent calls, the distribution of these calls within time. And by pushing these tabs of specific fraud types, you can see this graph for specific types of fraud. On the other hand, uh, the uh, full list of uh, fraudulent calls is available. And this list contains the full details for each call, including the next hop carrier. And uh, this can be information can be downloaded in CSV format uh, for further analysis for further processing. Uh, also, at a deeper level, uh, inbound and outbound traffic can be uh, analyzed separately. It can be grouped by country or gateway, so you can immediately see which operator or which next hop carrier is responsible for bringing most of the fraud in or out of the network. It shows the networks which are affected by the uh, fr fraud cases, it shows the number of fraudulent calls, and in case the fraud is allowed to proceed, it shows the duration of fraudulent calls. Again, this information can be uh, downloaded from the system in CDR format for any given period of time with any given filters. Now, I mentioned that, that the rules can be quite flexible. Uh, indeed, uh, they can be both quite broad, so here in this, uh, snapshot I have the first rule uh, which is applicable for any fraudulent call so you can be that general or you can be very specific so for example you can mention a specific country a specific network specific fraud type or specific next hop carrier so the rules can be very narrow or they can be very broad that depends on the blocking policies of the operators and they can have uh, three levels of action that can be alert only that can be reject without even alerting or that's a combinated uh, uh, combinated uh, one that can has both reject and alert. The rules can be switched on and off. And what's important for each rule, you can see in the system when it was last triggered. So you have configured a very specific rule and it hasn't been triggered within a significant period of time. Maybe it's worth reconsidering the rule, maybe making it a bit more general. Uh, also, from the operator, we will need uh, a server to host uh, the AB Handshake uh, call registry. There's a number of options again here. A basic uh, server configuration will uh, handle up to 10,000 CPS, which will be enough for most of the operators. As of the server itself, it can be a physical server, it can be a virtual machine, which seems to be more, the most popular option at the moment, or it can be a cloud-based solution. In case the operator requests that kind of setup, it's also possible. Um, we are kind of, uh, currently in the process of global development, so that's not a test concept, that's really out there in the field. We are negotiating with over 200 operators worldwide on different steps, so that's from evaluation and or constructing a business case, signing agreements, and to actually onboarding. Uh, also, we are working, uh, besides working directly, we are working via value-added distributors because that's a good way for our clients to achieve uh, simpler and even more efficient onboarding. Uh, a big, uh, when we were starting work, uh, to work on this project, um, uh, initially we had this kind of, uh, we weren't sure that uh, the operators from traditionally vulnerable destinations, destinations traditionally associated with the fraud will be easy to reach, will be cooperating, but actually we see significant interest from those operators, which is, I think, due to the fact that uh, with uh, many many other solutions, potentially fraudulent number ranges are actually blocked, and they can even be blocked on the country code level. 
Now, using a baby handshake, the use of a baby handshake allows to avoid such kinds of such kind of blocking because each call is analyzed individually. So we see significant interest with uh, from traditionally risky destinations, if I may say so. Uh, the solution is quite young, but it's extensively promoted within the industry working groups. We are working with all the major industry working groups. We are working with uh, Risk and Insurance Group, the I3 Forum, the CFCA, and we are also working within the JSMA. Now, uh, another stream of our activities is to uh, work with uh, national regulators because we really believe that adoption of AB Handshake as a kind of validation standard within a certain country is really beneficial both for the operators and the customers. Uh, the AB Handshake uh, solution has a good response from the industry. So uh, we have won a number of industry awards. That's the uh, Risk Award in 2020. We've also won uh, two nominations uh, to Cybersecurity Awards uh, this year. And besides the uh, feedback from the panels of these awards, there's also a good uh, feedback from the industry itself. So for in several countries, at least, we've seen a case of kind of viral adoption when uh, we've reached out to one operator within the country and then other operators from the same country uh, came back to us and they wanted to have presentations for themselves too because they were communicating obviously and uh, they liked the idea of the solution. So at the moment we see that the feedback from the industry is really uh, optimistic. Now just a quick check at the end of this presentation uh, from what I told you uh, early on. I think that a really AB handshake is compliant with all the aims that were set before us when we started to devise this tool. So it's really universal to works in real time with both IP and IP networks. It works with all types of fraud. It's uh, attractive and affordable for all types of service providers. So it uh, works for both the originating and terminating parties for each fraud type. So that's really important. It's not intrusive, it doesn't affect the calls in any ways, unless the operator chooses to block them on suspicion of fraud. It's really simple and in, in terms of architecture, and uh, it does provide objective and uh, valuable evidence uh, in case of each fraudulent call. Now, what's next? Uh, we are, on the one hand, we are working to enhance the solution because well, the logic of the solution is uh, devised so that it really doesn't need to adapt in case a new type of fraud is discovered because it's actually the same the same business. It's again, it's validating the same data sets against each other. But uh, at least on the interface side, on how this is uh, depicted in the interface, on how the, our clients see the results of validation, we are working with our uh, early adopters, with our clients to enhance the solution to make the solution more predictable and uh, more convenient for the operators to use. And globally, uh, the same, I think that the same uh, concept is very uh, good to have for SMS traffic also. And we're all also working on this. So this the AB handshake for SMS uh, is due at least as a test product uh, within 2021, which is a great, great news according to many of our customer clients that are really waiting for this product to come out. So I think that's all from me uh, from basic presentation and I'm ready to take any questions if there are any.